Hello, good morning, top of the morning to you from Kauai, Hawaii. WWJ whipping with Joe this morning. Uh, we're sporting in Saragossa 5000 SW, uh, similar to the Spheros. I prefer the Spheros because of the cost, but it said it's up to you. This is a faster retrieve than the Spheros. Um, you can put two spools on this thing, either a 5,000 spool, which I have, and that's fitted with 30 pound suffix, trying suffix line. And it's got a little over 200 yards in it. Uh, we've got a HMG, my favorite. And today we're sporting a 6 foot 6 HMG Fenwick. Uh, we've got a uni knot, a surgeon's knot on 80 pound about three, four feet, 80 pound mono and a rapal loop knot to the tsunami talking popper they call this. Uh, makes creates a lot of noise. Love this thing. I mean, guaranteed to attract something. Almost same as the Shimano actually. But Shimano doesn't have this lip here. It's a smaller lip, easier to retrieve, I think. And uh, a lot of people ask me uh, why I don't use the FG knot. The reason why I don't use an FG knot is because if you, if you put an FG knot here and using popper, uh, there's no way that you're going to go either fish for moi, ninur, kala, or papio with an FG knot here. You're going to have to remove this FG knot. You, can, you might have a split ring, whatever, but still yet, the split ring is after the FG knot. It's not before the FG knot, so that's why I don't use the FG knot. Uh, I'm very simple, and majority of fish here is not over 20 pounds. Uh, you're lucky to get something over bigger, so I'm into that mode. I, I'm, uh, I'm not, a, and I believe that any any plug that's five inch, uh, which I use, is a, which is the cock, is the, the one I use the most, is uh, induces fish that's bigger than 30 pounds. So uh, I, I don't uh, use a bigger plug uh, I, for the time fish. If I have not about an hour, not over, uh, I need to fish for a lot of different species. And not for just one popper because you got you get people with two rods, you know, one for small game and one for a bigger game. Well, I, I don't have that option. I mean, I have, but it's too much weight for me. I, I, I travel light. Uh, like I said, I only have, I have, uh, I bring with me normally two poppers uh, and uh, four jigs and small container box, and that's it. Very simple. I have a bag. I have mono, mono this pack here made by, uh, I'm not sure who makes this one here, Outdoor Products. Here's this one here. Here's this one here. I mean, uh, I'm using, uh, using outdoor products right here. Got uh, one for mono on my left, another one for mono on my right for small and big game, and then I have a pouch. And in this pouch is my inventory of small game stock. Whatever. That's all I got there. Swivels, weight, half ounce, that's all I use. And hooks. Here we have, we call the, I call, we have jigs and grubs. Very simple. That's all I need. Very light. I have a set of pliers. Just in case uh, your uh, fish, you can't get the fish out, the hooks out, out of the mouth. And, uh, and, and that's it. Uh, that's my inventory. I got my hat and my contour camera and a bag that has the other popper in it. There's a lot of small bag, a black bag, very simple. Put them on the shoulder here. And, uh, and that is it. <clears throat> so we're going to do 10 casts here. I normally throw to the left side of a drop off. I normally fish when you have foam, whenever you see white water. And if you notice, it, uh, it's not like a big, uh, it's a crank and a pop, but simultaneously. So whenever you're cranking forward, you, the, other, the, the other hand is on the right is coming up. And it's only short, it's not over 12, 12 inches uh, pop. Very, very short, less than 12 inches. With the wrist. This is all wrist action. And that's why uh, I like uh, smaller rods. Uh, in fact, I love the six foot six, even the six foot rod because it's stiffer. And when I pull it, like on, on, on the pop, when you pop, there's no flex in the rod. And so it's real short the action. If you have a soft tip, then when you pop it, it's going to flex. So you got to pop it further, or you got to bring the rod higher. And uh, that's what I don't want. So seven foot is the biggest 
rod that I normally use uh, for my popping and you know, smoking. I use a nine foot sometimes, but not too often. But this is my strict seven foot is my mainstay, six foot six and the six foot. Right now I'm using a six foot six rod, HMG rod. Uh, I also have the HMX. So I got seven foot, six ten, six six, and a six foot rod. That's my inventory. Uh, so if one breaks, at least I got another rod that I can, or has to go in service. You know, I can uh, use them. Uh, right now, my Spheros is in the shop, uh, getting repaired, so I'm using the Saragosa. I don't normally use a Gosa, because uh, I don't like the retrieve. The retrieve is faster than I'm accustomed with, but uh, actually, this is my backup. So, the Spheros should be in tomorrow. Went in for one year service. Had over 350 hours of cranking. Only two, only, the thing was still smooth, that's new. Never crapped out. The only bad thing about it was a, uh, the bale roller baron was bad. I had to order that and replace it. And you know that when you crank it, you, you hear a, like a, you can feel the vibration. So I ordered that piece and then a plastic piece that fits to the bottom of the spool. And that went bonkers, so you couldn't tighten the drag. Whenever you tighten the drag, the, the spool would go down past the plastic bumper. So that didn't work. So anyway, it was up for a year. So I, I had it for a year, almost a year, one week out before a year, and I sent it in for service, a one, one year service. I'm not sure what you do in a one year service. Uh, maybe they just lube it and bring it, send it back to me without repairing any parts. Um, uh, because they were still cranking new, but you know, maybe, maybe they'll change the bearings after a one year service. But I'm not really sure what they're gonna do now. So uh, this is the first time I've ever had the Sparrow, so I have Stratix before. And Stratix, they would just change the two bearings, the pinion gear, and uh, another gear, normally the main gear. That's what they've been replacing for the, the Stratex they've had. Um, so if you're comparing the Stratex with a Gosa or a Spheros, then don't, because the Stratex is not a, not made for salt water. You just got to make sure that you don't, you know, go, go into salt water with it. I mean, you know, you can probably in a dock, if you don't go in the water like I do, then, then, then it's a good one. But if you're going to go whipping in the water, you think you're going to fall down, or if you're bound to fall down, it's a matter of time when you fall in. Your water now has already got salt inside so if you go to a watertight reel which is the gosa and uh spheros then you won't have that problem so i i, I vouch for that spheros because i had one spheros that lasted a year with no issues basically and i went to 10 stratic in two years i would have been better off just buying a spheros from the get-go, actually, but of course, the first didn't come in until last year, <clears throat> and I think that was probably one of the major issues that they had was the uh, corrosion in the reel from salt water. So, if you're fishing for salt water, recommend you to get a Spheros, which is the most affordable counterpart of the Gosa. The difference is the ratio. Hold the same amount of line, basically, uh, and the Gosa is a little lighter, but. The difference between is 50 and 70 dollars. So all up to you. You can get two sparrows or you can get a Gosa if you want the speed and sparrows would be for the backup. Yeah, that's what I recommend. You're gonna need two reels. The reason why I say two reels is when one goes in for service and you know you're gonna have to need another one. So anyway, uh, like I, said, uh, I whip fast, pretty fast here uh, and that's why I like it. So I can cover, I can cover more ground. <clears throat> We got two more areas to cover here, like I said, so I, I try to cover as much as the area as I can. Uh, like I, said, I believe you, you, you've got to go and find the fish. The technique is to find the fish and the, the pre presentation of the lure. And I believe that catching a fish is not success. Um, I, what I believe in success in whipping is, is the strike. If you can generate the strike, granted you want to catch everything, but I'm just saying when you generate a strike and you, you can be consistent of it, that, that means you, you've got something that... Uh, not too many people have, um, you know, so uh, that's the idea of it. I mean, you need the fish to strike, and, and so you've got to find a, a way. And, and, and like I said, I, I've, I've gone through this route. Uh, like I said, I normally fish on a daily basis, learned a lot, but I go for a lot of different species of fish. And that's why I'm productive in, in, in the hour that I, I go, go fishing. And I try to go with one rod, one reel. So I normally say you can go seven, eight foot rod, 
uh, Sparrow 5000, and you know what? You can do, you can go from small game to big game with, with that gear. I mean, that's about it. Uh, and you're off, and you're, that's gonna cost you about 300 bucks. Uh, well, of course, the rod, the rod is 100. You know, I, I prefer the Fenwick, but like I said, you, you can go any, any one you, you want, but I, I've used the Fenwick for the, uh, maybe close to three years now, and I've never broken a Fenwick on a rod. Never broke it on a rod. I broke it by, by myself, like either running over it or uh, uh, put it through the window or, you know, dropped it on the rock. You know, but that, that's, that's, that, that's my, my, my fault. But I've never broken one on, on any fish or sand turtle or, or turtle. <laughs> okay, so this is the last one right here, series. It's so not much like 10, maybe 20 casts in an area. This is going like about 100 yards here. And, uh, I, and I like it because when I pull it, like I say, it's not flexing. So the, 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 it's very easy for me to, to, to create the, the, the action that I want, which is on the top of the surface. And it's erratic, and it's jerky, it's a jerky uh, type. So I've been looking for a fish to hit it, not because it's hungry, it's just because it's, it's their instinct. Anyway, another technique for WWJ, Whipping with Joe here. This will be under the uh, tsunami popper, talking popper, they call it. Okay. Thank you very much for watching my videos. If you need to subscribe, please subscribe. And then, uh, if I can help you, you just need to text me. And uh, good luck to you on your next fishing trip. Okay, Aloha from Kauai. WWJ, Whipping with Joe. Mahalos, and thank you very much.